Hello everyone, welcome to our Let's Play series of Dragon Age Origins. This is Colonel RPG as usual, and I'm very happy that it shows to join me today here in our camp. I have been looking at our tactics over here, and they're really, really cool. Uh, I've been I've been um, changing th some things in that regard. Uh, I also looked into when we get uh, a specialization. Somebody told me that the Duelist is not really a very good specialization. The Assassin is really where I want to go at. And, um, yeah, I agree with that. This, the Duelist would be cool for just our character, I guess, in terms of roleplay, but, uh, you know, it, it works either way. It's gonna be a while, though. We're gonna need to wait until Chapter 3 to be to have this specialization, so I'm not gonna go up on that right now. Uh, and uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my Cunning, I'm gonna bring up my Dexterity a little bit, and uh, we are gonna get some more abilities because we need to level up and we need to talk to everybody We're just gonna talk to everybody. So this episode might feature a lot of talking uh, Well, they usually well not all of them do but yeah So below the belt this is an ability that Liliana has the rogue delivers a swift and unsportsmanlike kick t to the target Does normal combat damage and imposes a penalty to defense and movement speed um, So that's nice over here improved tools uh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna go with that because I need a thief and I'm not sure I'll have Liliana with me all the time So let's do that. Oh, that's the only level up that I have although I am kind of close to leveling up So that's pretty good uh, Let's let's continue having a chat with Liliana. She has a huge amount of, uh, of dialogue Yes, something you need I'd like to talk to you about something. Yes What's on your mind? So you were traveling minstrel. Do you have tales to share. Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Okay, so tell me about the Darkspawn. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin. And it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the Darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of her hubris. That sounds very convenient, honestly. Also, she doesn't really explain what their sin is. So, who knows what's going on. Uh, do you know any stories from Orle? Of course. Orlesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Orle. That sounds interesting. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Avelyn, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. <laughs> I saw that coming, that's a line. Uh, continue, please. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney. But Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Did she win the tourney? Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid, 
A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. Holy crap! I was hoping for a happy ending. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. I would like to ask what happened to the Cavalier or whatever the name of the guy is. Hmm. <clears throat> well, um... I think I asked already this. Tell me about the dark spawn. I think she might go back to the same dialogue. Chantry Law yeah. says it is man's in ages past. The mages yeah. and their pride. Yeah, yeah. She goes back to the any conversation. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted. So, do you know? Sorry, do you know any Feralden legends? A long time ago, a girl child was born oh. to a farmer. He had hoped for a son. Before so that goes back to that one as well. She learned to wield the sword as well. Okay. All right. I will tell you the tale another time if you wish it. There was another story I wanted to hear. Which one? Do you know anything about the Dalish? I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed, but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in a land of their own. It didn't last? The land of their own didn't last? Huh, I'm gonna say that. I'm not sure. The elves lived in the dales for centuries, they resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. Ah. This angered the chantry, and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The chantry says the elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the winter. During the exalted march of the dales, the elven cities were sacked, and the elven state completely dissolved. Some of the elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. What do you know about Andraste? Andraste was the maker's chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the Maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. That's quite an interesting... Story. We had heard of Andraste before, I think. That's, uh, you know, that's that sets up the... Um, not so much the Tevinter. What's the, uh... Is it the Tevinter Empire? No, what, what the city that we grew up in, the bigger city, is it part of Tevinter? I don't think so. I might be mistaken on that, though. Uh, I think I think it is Andraste's uh, of that faction, anyway. Um, how did Andastri die? Alas, 
It was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Mafarath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Mafarath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Mafarath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. Andraste was burned at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. And you know this? You know him to be a traitor? What happened to him is the question I wanted to make as well. But Tevinta here is a chantry as well, doesn't it? Hmm, let's go with that. The Tevinta Chantry claims that in Andraste's last moments, Hesarian's heart softened, and he heard the voice of the Maker telling him to end her suffering. He plunged his sword into her heart, and as her blood washed over his hands, he became one of the faithful. Dissenters said that the Archon only converted because he could not stem the tide of Andraste's cult, and was forced to do so to stay in power. We will never know for sure. That sounds like a very bad move. To kill their hero and then Oh wait 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 don't 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 murder us all. We are gonna convert even though we just killed your hero. Not three centuries later. No no, just now. Just now. Mm, I would I mean I don't know what how I don't know the level of mysticism this uh, this game has. I would believe that story of the maker t telling him to end her suffering. Um I, I would believe that, because it would make more sense than killing her and then immediately converting to appease them. That's That doesn't sound like, hmm, you couldn't, you'd convert to appease her, not, you, you wouldn't spy, you wouldn't like poke the bee's nest and be like, no, 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 it's good, it's good. No, it's like it sounds, anyway, uh, so yeah, I would believe um, the Tevinter lord apparently, he, st he stood in power, which is interesting. Uh, so that's that, and uh, she enjoyed that. Okay, good stuff. Let's have a chat. Uh, that's Sandal over there. Let's go to have a chat with Salandil. Salandil, San Salandil yeah. Uh, and then with everybody else. We also have Levi Dryden, or Dryden. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm going to go Dryden. Ah, it's good to see you, my timely rescuer. Bodon Fedic, at your service. Once again, I saw your camp and remember the kind offer that you made the last time we met. And is there anywhere safer for a poor merchant and his son to sleep? I think not. I'm perfectly willing to offer you a fine discount for the inconvenience of our presence. How does that sound? Good? Yes? Yes. You're free to stay. Um, just mind yourselves, I suppose. I don't know what that's supposed to mean. Wonderful. Thank the gentleman, won't you, boy? Thank you, sir. We won't be a bother to you and your companions, I assure you. If you should need enchantments, simply talk to my boy. Otherwise, come speak with me. Sounds good to me. Hello. The boy's a bit simple, but he's rather good with enchantments. One of those tranquil fellas actually called him a... What was it now? A savant. I had no idea such a thing existed. I... What enchantments does he do? He can fold lyrium into almost any weapon or piece of armor. Though naturally some of the more extravagant materials will take more lyrium than others. It's a process that some of the master smiths back in Orzammar will perform. But my boy here is just as adept at it. Isn't that right, boy? Enchantment! And there you have it. Huh. Um, okay, let's see some enchantments then. Enchantment! Okay, so we have our Oathkeeper, which is the only one that we can enchant. And I have some runes over here. Is it the only one? It looks like it is the only one. Does it cost money? Please don't cost money. It doesn't look like it costs money. Okay, are we using this? This would be probably Alistair's sword. Novice flame rune for fire damage. Electricity damage. Why would... Oh, because that's a journeyman. Oh, well, that sounds simple to me then. Uh, and then also the slow, which doesn't really matter. That would be good for something else. So I wonder if those are runes that I have. Quest completed. Enchantment. While Bodan is a well-stocked merchant, his boy Sandal offers something more valuable. Enchantment with a double dash. I... 
I can ramble about the double dash eventually. Uh, let's see. So I would like to look at you, Alistair. You have the borrowed longsword. The Oathkeeper is better. Uh, so just have that. And it probably was better already before. It just, yeah, well. Um, so, well done. If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. Uh, so what's your story exactly? Well, if you're really interested, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to tell you. I am originally from Orzammar, the famed dwarven city that lies beneath the stately Frostback Mountains. I was a merchant there, too. Merchant caste. These things are in the blood, you know. You can't just leave them behind. I ran a fairly successful business. Rare artifacts, you know. Old things, grand things. The nobles loved them. Reminded them of the lost glory days, I suppose. Interesting that they call him the merchant caste. And then doesn't call it the noble cast. The merchant cast sounds like a very weird name for for a cast. You like uh, how I think how um, Pillars of Eternity Two handles it with the different names. Actual name for the cast makes more sense. It does it does add to the names that you'll need to learn to play that game. Well, don't really need to learn, but to understand the game uh, or understand the storyline. Um, and definitely not a reference to Moria to do our our. Kazadum? No. What's the name? Arodel. Dwarodelf? Dwarodelf, I think, is the city underneath. Uh, the Frostback Mountains is his name, but what is the... the Blue Mountains? I don't know the name of the mountains under which Moria exists. Moria being the wall complex of mines. Uh, in the city, there's a city in there. Why did you leave? One day, a noble woman came to my store. She looked around for a bit and then started shrieking in dismay. Apparently, she believed that a pair of braces I had for sale once belonged to her brother. He'd been lost in a cave-in, you see, while on an expedition to clear out the darkspawn from one of the tunnels running close to the city. They were made specially for him. They're unique, she shrieked. He stole them from my poor brother's corpse. She had me arrested on the spot, of course. Nobles, they're touchy like that. And did you steal them? Well, I didn't steal them. You see, I, I'd been paying these castless thugs to venture out into the deep roads for me. The lost tigs. They're full of things that people left behind. Sometimes you can find a treasure. Something worth a little gold. Isn't that stealing? I mean, I don't think it is. Better to do something with them than leave them to rot. That's exactly how I see it. The noble woman, she wasn't too happy with the theft of her brother's braces. I don't know what they planned for me, and I didn't want to find out. Bribed the guard that was watching me and took off for the surface first opportunity I got. Never looked back. And now you're here. Yes, here I am. Now, is there anything the boy or I can get you? I, yeah, I, yes, but have you heard any rumors? I hear that Tyr Logain, the regent, is calling for new levies of troops. He wants to rebuild the army we lost at Astagar. Thing is, there's not a lot of spare men to be found. Out of Dragon's Peak, there's press gangs roaming around, grabbing any free man they can lay their hands on. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Any other rumors? It's not just Darkspawn in the Horde, you know that? There's ogres as there well. There are people with them. Folks who are sick with the blight, oh. and their minds are all twisted and mad. I heard tell of a man meeting his own brother on the field, yet when he called out to him, his brother didn't even recognize him and just attacked. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. And I assume this person who got attacked by their own brother who didn't recognize them and just attacked survived to tell the tale. Huh. On the field. Field of battle. Hmm. That, I don't know that I believe that rumor. Although, from a meta perspective, I probably do. Because, that you know, we're playing a game. It just, I, anyway. Heard any other rumors? I hear tell they held a funeral in Denerim for King Caelan. The Grand Cleric called for a full day of mourning. And there was a procession a mile long passing by the Brasier. It's too bad they don't have a body to properly burn. What happened to him at the hands of those creatures, it's unthinkable. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Any more? I heard from some travelers that something bad might have happened in Redcliffe. Overrun by Darkspawn, maybe. 
There's no word from the village at all. A merchant friend of mine said he encountered someone fleeing the place and there was nothing waiting for him there but death. He wisely turned around and came right back. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Okay, more. Some folks aren't happy about Tian Logain being named Regent. There are rumors he had something to do with the King's death. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you ever heard? The Darkspawn killed him, sure enough. If Tian Logain couldn't save the King from that end, then nobody could. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Uh, it, yeah, I don't know to what point my... I, I think we have asserted that my character has preternatural powers here and saw uh, what happened by with Logan re running away. I don't know. Maybe the visions that... Well, the, the cutscene that we had is an unreliable narrator and it wasn't really exactly what happened. My character maybe was there, even though the cutscene didn't show it. I don't know. Heard any other rumors? I hear the Dwarven King is passed on. Old as he was, he was probably poisoned or assassinated. That's how the dwarves normally go out, isn't it? That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it. With King Kaelin dead, the throne falls to Queen Anora. She's made her father the region, however, at least for now. I think Kaelin's father, old King Merrick, would have approved. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. I've heard a lot of stories of bands of darkspawn roaming the countryside far north of the Kokori Wilds. They just seem to appear out of nowhere and disappear just as fast. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Something's going on at the Mage's Tower at Lake Kalinhod. I'm going there next. Nobody knows exactly what that. I think. The Templars aren't saying exactly what we need, isn't it? Let's hope the Mages are just cooking up something to deal with the Darkspawn. Somebody should be, after all. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. There's knights from Redcliffe spread all over Ferelden on some kind of mission, but I hear that they're starting to become rare to find. Maybe they all went back to Redcliffe. More likely they got tired of searching for something that can't be found. The, not, not the Holy search. Grail, definitely. I wonder what Earl Eamon is going to do without any knights. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. I hear from folks traveling the East Roads that there's werewolves in the Brazilian forest. My God! Actual werewolves. <laughs> They haven't been around since the days of Dane and his ilk. That's what I've heard on the road. Anyhow. There's so many rumors. I'm not take gonna. For I'm not gonna take any more. But uh, werewolves. Where? Where? Uh, so where do these goods come from? Not the deep roads. Look, we we don't rob people. All right. We don't take things from people that need them. The things in the lost tags. What good did they do lying there? I brought them back to Orzammar, where people could look at them and remember. It's not all that different up here. There are places long abandoned by the humans everywhere. Even more now with the Darkspawn coming. No, you can, you can, you can t steal from whoever. It's whomever, sorry. It's fine. It's absolutely, because I do that. And certainly take things from the thighs or whatever that is. What do you mean? People flee from the blight with good reason, but they forget things. Things with value and meaning. They leave them behind because they're frightened and desperate. And sometimes my boy and I... We find our way to these places before the Horde descends, and we save these things. I take them away so the Darkspawn don't get them. Is that so bad? They destroy everything they touch. Everyone has to make a living somehow. That's what I tell myself, too. Ah, these are dark times indeed. Dark times, my friend. Sure. Um... You didn't mention your son in your tale, by the way. Ah, yes. I'm married to a fine woman back in Denerim, it's true. She'd give me a son if she could, but uh, that's not likely to ever be. Sandal here. I found him in the deep roads years ago. Abandoned, I think. And he was never quite right in the head. I took him in, and I brought him with me when I came here to the surface. It may not be my blood, true. But I think of him as one. We left Orzammar. That's right, boy. Maybe one day we'll see it again. Hmm. Well, that was generous of you. It's not as if I don't benefit, mind you. Turns out the boys are natural working with enchantments. He might have even been leery addled. I never thought of that before, to be honest. Happens sometimes. He can work an enchantment into just about anything, however, given some time. Could probably open his own shop, if he knew how. Enchantment. <laughs> well, he does seem to enjoy it, at least. I uh, sure. Um, so let me see your wares. 
I'm sure you'll be pleased with the goods my boy and I have collected. And with your discount. Oh yeah, give me the discount. But more importantly, buy all my crap. Uh, so let's see what he has. He has the... This is some good things, I would assume. Um, very expensive things. Some really expensive things. Did you see? Look at that. I'll never be able to buy any of that. Some interesting things in here. Eh, sort of. Uh, and then we have... Uh, the Blood Dragon Blade Helmet. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably not buy these right now. I will sell things, but I'll take care of that off camera because uh, selling is uh, is a bit of a chore. Oh, Morgan's back here. Why are you here, Morgan? I mean, do you want privacy or something? Like, she does have a freaking badass fireplace right there. <laughs> She's like the biggest fireplace ever. Hi. What do you wish of me? I just like to ask something. If you must. So, can you teach others to become shape changers? I cannot teach you, no. But any other mages that cared to learn, yes, I could do that. Send whoever you wish my way, and I shall teach them what I can in the camp, provided they possess the will to even make the attempt. Specialization unlocked. Not for me, though. What do you wish of me? Interesting. Uh, can I ask you something? If you must. So, did you grow up in the Corkeri Wilds? Why do you ask me such questions? I do not probe you for pointless information, do I? Well, you can probe me anytime. Beg pardon, then, while I jump for joy. What is it you asked if I grew up in the wilds? A curious question. Where else would you picture me? For many years it was simply Flemeth and I. The wilds and its creatures were more real to me than Flemeth's tales of the world of man. In time, I grew curious. I left the wilds to explore what lay beyond, never for long. Brief forays into a civilized wilderness. But you kept going back to the wilds? Would you not do the same? Your world is an unforgiving and cold place. The wilds I hail from is home to me and I a natural denizen. For all that I had been taught, however, the truth of the civilized lands proved to be... overwhelming. I was unfamiliar with so much. So confident and bold was I, yet there was much that Flemeth could never have prepared me for. It's very daring. Sounds like you. <laughs> Equal parts daring and foolhardy, perhaps. Only once was I accused of being a witch of the wilds, and that by a chastened who happened to be traveling with a merchant caravan. He pointed and gasped and began shouting in his strange language, and most assumed he was casting some curse upon me. I acted the terrified girl, and naturally, he was arrested. <laughs> well, that also sounds like you. <laughs> I was going to say she was feeling very uh, self-aware, I guess, is the word that I want to use uh, throughout that. Um, I suppose I'm supposed... Wait, I'm supposed to be surprised you're a good liar? That wasn't a lie. Not, you know, unless that wasn't a lie, right? That's not a lie. That's not what a lie is. Um, to, what happened to the poor man? What poor man? He started shouting at her. That was quick thinking, yeah. Men are always willing to believe two things about a woman. One, that she is weak, and two, that she finds him attractive. I played the weakling and battered my eyelashes hmm. at the captain of the guard. <laughs> Child's play. The point being that I was able to move through human lands fairly easily. Whatever humans think a witch of the wild looks like, tis not I. Not that I did not point. have trouble. There are things about human society which have always puzzled me, such as the touching. Why all the touching for a simple greeting? I... I'm sorry, I didn't... You mean like a handshake? I mean, I mean, depends on the. I don't. Know, I don't know the customs of our society, Morrigan. I don't know what the touching is. Do we hug a lot? Do we kiss? Cause that's the thing. I have no idea. I'm not human, right? She's talking about human society. Uh, I don't know though. The handshake itself is is uh. Is um, it's not necessarily universal. I don't know. I can t totally see the elves not touching at all, you know, for greetings and stuff. And certainly, 
it's, she's completely correct in, in pointing it out and not being okay with it. I have no idea. I'm not human. Do not speak to me of trivialities. Your culture is not so entirely different. I, there were I many nuances that Flemeth could never tell me of. When to look into another's eyes. How to eat at a table. How to bargain without offending. None of these things I knew. I still do not understand it all, truth be told. But then I gave up long ago any hope of doing so. When I returned to the wilds last, I swore to Flemeth that I had no intention of leaving again. And I think that explains why she sounds so forced sometimes. When she's trying to be persuasive, I think she sounds forced. Did I say that? Am I misremembering it? I remember, I, th I have that recollection of her trying to sound polite and pleasant and sounding forced. And when she doesn't, she sounds sarcastic. And that is very much her character. And I love it that it wasn't explained right away because... And also, this is not necessarily an exp the full explanation, but it's, that's really awesome. Uh, I suppose Flemeth had no intention of leaving again. Well, I'm glad it worked out this way, at least. Yes? Let's ignore the entire Darkspawn threat and the presence of a simpleton as your only other Grey Warden ally, then. <laughs> not that I lack appreciation for the intent of your comment. Thank you. Well, let's get on with it before the ground opens up and swallows us, yes? Yes, indeed. <laughs> Well, that's going to be that for today. I'm Curdle RPG, and this has been Dragon Age Origins. I really hope you've enjoyed it, in, enjoyed me. Well, enjoyed my performance, I guess. Um, and enjoyed the episode, hopefully. Um, and if you did, go ahead and leave a comment. Like the video uh, if you want to see the next episode come out sooner rather than later. But above all, thank you so much for watching, and I hope I'll see you next episode. Bye-bye.